So I think one of the biggest things I've learned, and this is with reality TV, this is with John, this is with X, everything. Don't fall in love drunk. I think, <laughs> I think there's... Welcome back to Dear Shandy, listeners. Hello, Andy. Hello. How are you today? I'm doing good. Only good? No, I'm I'm doing great. You should be elated right now. I am. Ecstatic. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big day. It feels like we're coming full circle. Yeah. Because our guest today was the lead of our first ever season yes. that we recapped here at Dear Shandy. Mm-hmm. And she's a big deal. I would say she's like kind of like she's, one of the biggest and deals. And becoming bigger. Yeah. <laughs> the deal keeps getting bigger. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so we are joined today by, I mean, she's a stand-up comedian, which I think is pretty badass. Mm-hmm. I mean, no one else has made that transition, that's no. for sure. And you first met her as a contestant on season 25 of The Bachelor. She went on to become the season 17 Bachelorette, and that's where we started recapping. And now she currently stars in F-Boy Island, the current season, which is season three is airing now on the CW and Hulu. And I have to tell you, Miss Katie Thurston, that I think you've been particularly good at towing the line between being authentic to yourself, but still knowing that there's a show to be put on. At least that's my perception of you. (laughs) So yeah, we have a lot of questions for you today. Thank you so much for joining us, Katie Thurston. Thank you. Hello, everybody, and thank you for having me. I feel like you could not just be called Katie. She's Katie Thurston. Mrs. Thur- Miss Thurston. Miss Thurston. Miss <laughs> Thurston. <laughs> the talent. Okay, so F Boy Island season three is currently airing. You are once again the lead. You're the one dating multiple people. And that is just such a unique thing to do twice, especially with <laughs> two different shows, two different networks. This is just such a crazy thing to do twice. And so today I really wanted this conversation to be a confessions episode where we're going to grill you a little about what was going on in your mind when you made certain choices. Oh yeah. That, I mean, ask away. Okay. Awesome. I love this about her. She's yeah. got a good sense of humor. Open you are door. our favorite on, on F boy Island, by the way. And, and I'm not, uh, this is not just because you're here. I mean, there is three, so it's not a huge competition, but you are hands down our favorite. I mean, I I feel weird saying that though because she's friends with the other leads. It's okay. Uh, it's the Bachelor family though. It's we have to stick together, so it's okay. Yeah, That's there's right. got to be a best, even if you're friends. Okay. There's a best one of your friends. Yes. Okay. So, Katie Thurston, as the lead of two TV shows where it's about your love life, but you know there is still a show to be made. How have you navigated honoring your needs? while accommodating production. I feel like that's got to be a delicate balance. You know, it's interesting because with F-Boy Island and the fact that there's a prize at the end, production really doesn't get to do a lot of meddling, which has made the experience very enjoyable because we're just there to exist how we want. Mm. You know, there's there's laws that kind of uh, stop any kind of interference with the outcome of who's going to get the prize. Mm. And that was very noticeable the first night when I'm talking with one of the guys and people aren't interrupting right away, you know, I'm not having like 20, 25 minute conversations. I'm like, this is how the show is going to work. Okay. I do think that what's interesting about F boy Island versus bachelor is like, because of that prize that you mentioned, the power dynamic imbalance is not the same as it is on bachelor bachelorette. That is something that has always bothered me about the bachelor shows. And I mean, I went on the show, like I obviously were, you know, we watch the show, we're fans of the show, but it is sort of hard to imagine a really healthy, quote unquote, normal outcome when one of you has all the power and the other person doesn't have any. And so I just think it's interesting with F-Boy Island that you too have something to lose at the end. Yeah. And it's a really great balance on the show because there's three women. So the guys, you know, in some ways do still get a choice, you know, and what they're pursuing and how they want to pursue those relationships. So, you know, you're not this like solo prize. It just feels very um, authentic in terms of like the dating world. Like you go to a bar and there's women and there's men and there's, you know, interactions. And the first, I think two episodes, we were all still kind of like exploring it very openly. So never did it feel like we had full power. And then, like you said, especially towards the end, depending on if there is an F-boy involved, that F-boy could have the power. Mm -hmm. Okay, so based on your experience, what has been the most common misconception or misconceptions about being the lead 
of any reality dating show. Well, it's different because like with with Bachelorette, everyone's always like, was it fun? And my first answer is always no. It's not fun on Bachelorette. It's it's a lot of filming and it's nonstop. But then if that if I'm asked that same question for FY Island, it very much was fun. You know, we only filmed five out of the seven days. There was a healthy balance of rest and um resetting that was allowed. And so this this new opportunity that came was just such a different experience. And I'm so thankful that like end on like a high note of of a reality TV experience. Oh, oh, and there won't be a third? God, I hope not. I mean, not <laughs> dating anyways, right? Like there's only so many times you can date on TV before it's like, maybe that's not for you. <laughs> <laughs> so there have been no misconceptions. I just mean like you being in that position, for example, I was only ever a contestant on The Bachelor and I left in what, episode seven or so. Mm -hmm. But I was still struck by how that would follow me in my life, in my career, in my online presence, just sort of general assumptions made about the kind of person who does that. And mm -hmm. I was a, you know, a contestant. I was on TV for seven episodes. So have you found that the world, whether privately or publicly, has responded to you differently having done what you've done? I would say overall, no. And I think that's just how you choose to carry yourself in the real world. You know, like I very much have entered back into my normal life and act very normal in, in the public. And when I interact with people, I'm just, I guess, very humble or like the same. I'm approachable, you know? Mm -hmm. And so maybe people think that you're going to act a certain way or that you have this like luxurious life and parties and whatever. It's like a lot of us leads or not do just go back to a very normal life and try to just go back to kind of where we left off a little bit. I mean, sure, our job is different because we have these opportunities now, mm -hmm. but I personally feel like I'm still the exact same person I was pre-reality TV. Any backlash or reaction to any choices you've made that have surprised you? Um, I mean, it's it was very interesting to watch um, people be so invested in different love stories, you know, mm -hmm. like, like in a way that they are almost more invested than I was. Um, so that was probably the most surprising, especially as someone who's watched reality TV from what I thought was a very normal level. But there is so many layers to the fandom of the intensity of how people view and support or don't support the contestants. Yeah, mm. I'm sure that's got to be a little weird watching back, actually, especially if from your perspective, you were like, yeah, it was, it was fine. <laughs> how could you let Thomas Jacobs walk out the door? <laughs> Andy's a longtime Thomas fan. I don't. Thomas I don't. is great. Actually, Thomas just messaged me a video this morning. He's in the new neighborhood of the foster dog that I just found a home for and come to find out they're like neighbors with Thomas. So I was like, oh my God, small world here in San Diego. Oh, nice. So you guys talk. Oh, yeah. That's, that's the thing with reality TV is like villains, you know, you, go, you guys know how it works. It's like, sure, on a show, you could be a villain. A producer can make it seem like someone's worse than they really are. But then you, again, you get to know these people in the real world off camera and everyone is just very much normal. Okay. Okay. So to build on that question, very much <laughs> normal when you get to know them in the real world. Have you found that when you got to know people in the real world, they were totally different than they were on the show? Yeah. I'm in both ways. I think some people are a lot uh, more grand on TV and on a pedestal in terms of the fandom. And then you meet them in the real world and they're very like, they they kind of stuck up. They they embrace that, you know. And then there's people like you said with Thomas, who was like a villain on my season, but very much is one of the nicest people I've ever met from the show. I mean, okay. <laughs> some people saw him as a villain. I had Thomas's back from the beginning, but I agree with you. Sorry, I have a, I have a thing with Thomas. It's, it's a little uncomfortable. Was there anyone from your season on the bats or that you met in the real world that you had? significantly differing opinions on and maybe almost regretted the way you you engage with them on the show like maybe thought that oh there could be something with this person and I didn't think that before or vice versa I mean I think John would be the obvious answer as someone I sent home very early on my season and then dated in the real world you know mm -hmm. not everybody is cut out for TV or you're too normal for TV therefore you're not supported by production but then you meet them in the real world when the cameras are removed, the producers are removed, the environment of sharing the same girl is removed and you get to really see these people for who they are and not the like reality TV version of them. Mm -hmm. mm. Have you ever 
watched yourself back, and this is with either show. I have a feeling you're not going to say this about F Boy Island, but you can. Uh, where you watched yourself back and you felt that you or your choice was misrepresented on the show. My choice, like like decisions I'm making, or like yeah. people. I'm, I mean, sure. There's there's only so much uh, freedom I have. I mean, as you know, like you yeah. can have an opinion or a route you want to go, but behind the scenes, there's a whole nother plan happening. So yeah, I would, I would say that's pretty obvious sometimes. Okay. So have you ever watched it back and been like, have you ever cringed or just felt frustrated? Has it ever brought you to tears? Oh, uh, nothing's brought me to tears watching it back. I mean, for my, what is that shocking? I'm a, you- no, I'm amazed by you. I just think you're so unflappable. And I thought I had this perception of you, but you really do seem to be this way. It's very impressive. We're going to get to that later <laughs> about your your brand. But I'm just because I actually I know enough about you or have done enough research on you to know that you are a sensitive person. For sure. Yeah. And watching you on The Bachelorette, you were extremely um, empathetic to the point where I think it almost hindered you at times because it hurts so much to cause hurt to other people. So I find it very interesting that you are able to sort of, or were able to just sort of watch yourself on TV. And it's just interesting. I, it's like, I'm finding like a slight similarity between us and a slight um, dissimilarity. Cause yeah. for me, I have this obsession with being understood. And so even watching myself in like a scene where I wasn't even looking bad, I would still be really like upset. Cause I would be like, that's not really how I meant it. So yeah, you just really I think didn't with have that. time like that. You get better. Don't get me wrong. After Matt's season, it was very hard to like watch it back and, and knowing things that like my experience or like the things I kept trying to do and was interfered with, you know, like the edit that there's so much that happens and there's only so much they can focus on, you know, but with time and um, literally, it's, I think Matt's season at this point was like three years ago. You learn that at the end of the day, like these opinions of people who don't know you don't matter. I mean, it mm-hmm. sucks for sure. It does because it's like, I'm a good person, I promise. But the people in my life know that and that's all that matters. And that that has taken time to embrace that. Don't get me wrong. I was very, uh, very much impacted on my first round of reality TV a few years ago. Mm. This is why she's a professional. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you were actually one of the least cryy bachelorettes. That's as true. I recall. Is uh, it which, crying? which I like. Cry-y. Least you didn't cry a lot. <laughs> oh. L- yeah, cryy like I- is not a word, I guess, but <laughs> I used it. Meant. I feel like I cried a lot. I I do embrace my emotions. Like being empathetic, yes, I'm very much that. Um even with the F-Boy Island, which is like the least serious show, there's still moments of like caring for people or being like, you know, Tanner, for example, is like, hey, this might not be the place for you. I'm mm-hmm. going to do you a service and just let you go home now. OK, what have you learned about yourself throughout? I mean, the last three years. Oh, I think I think one thing I've learned about myself is that I don't even know who I am yet. Like, you know, I very much before reality TV, I thought I was very set in my financial career and my little town of Renton, Washington and my little condo. Like I thought I was done, like morphing. (laughs) Yeah. And I continue to morph year after year, you know, and I'm about to be 33 and I'm still just like evolving into whatever it is I end up wanting to be. I don't even know. And it's it's weird to say that when you're in your 30s, you think, oh, I'm going to figure it all out. You don't. Yeah, until you, know? you get there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As someone who's a little older than you, I feel like Honestly. the your 30s as a woman are, I've learned more in the past five years than I did, certainly if you took 10 away, like the, the early, you know, the first, I don't know, let's say 22 to 27 versus 32 to 37. Mm-hmm. It's mind blowing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love my 30s. Don't get me wrong. I just thought I'd be more um, settled and then, you know. Life laughs at you and says, not yet. Yeah. yeah. You'd really never figure it out. Honestly, we're, yeah. we're still figuring it out. Yeah. I feel like that's the truth, honestly. Yeah. And isn't it so nice when you can admit it? Yeah. Because so few people do. It's true. You know what? Actually, I think there's too much focus put on figuring it out. Because once you figure it out, then what's that? That's it? You're done? Yeah. You're done doing things? Exploring? Yeah. Yeah. Just always keep figuring it out. I was reading an article this morning sent to me by sent to me by a girlfriend of mine. It was about crushes and what crushes can teach you about yourself. And it was talking about how everyone always is just has this goal oriented mindset. It's like a crush doesn't have to have an outcome. It can just be, you can enjoy a crush for what it is. And I feel like that could also be said for life. Well, that's the thing. Like these goal, goal oriented people, I think they're, they're missing the point. It's the journey oriented 
people. Yeah, it sounds that, like Katie's have it right. figured That's that the part thing. out. Do the journey. Just keep going until you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> Giving her advice. Yeah. <laughs> Andy, last time <laughs> Is that sexy time music, Andy? Does it sound like a sax or some other instrument? It sounds um, a little more strained than a smooth, creamy yeah, sax But that's okay that. We knew what you meant So Athena Club makes pretty much everything you could possibly need for your tub They take these things that you already need or that, you know, you think that that wheel has already been invented enough times. They take these things and make them even How many better. times has the wheel been invented? <laughs> My name is Joe Swanson and I am the fourth inventor of the wheel. A razor, you think, oh, what what could Athena Club bring to a razor that I don't already have? Right. And, whatever? and they brought all the things you didn't know that you wanted. Yes. Or you did know that you wanted, but you just felt that you were wanting too much. Yes. You were like, oh, that's, I'm, I'm being greedy. Yeah. The razor kit, which includes two serum infused blades, the actual razor itself, and the magnetic hook. This entire kit comes at, Andy? $10. <laughs> and looky what I have here. Ooh, it's their gentle body scrub, which we are obsessed with. The smell, the perfect graininess, not too harsh, not too mild, because sometimes scrubs are like, is there a scrub in there? Oh, you gotta Am have I something. being exfoliated? You got a scrub. There's gotta be a scrub. Yes. And then the wipe clean, like the when you rinse it off, sometimes oh, it leaves you too... No film. Yeah, no film, but also sometimes it's like too stripping yeah it's perfect yeah it's the best scrub i've used and i'm actually a scrub guy i yeah. like scrubs yeah actually out of all the sort of skincare products out there you love scrubs yeah but i, I molt <laughs> <laughs> you need some assistance i do and i will never seek assistance elsewhere mm -hmm. this is my final scrub oh this is the final scrub <laughs> So if you're ready to upgrade your shaving experience, switch to the best razor on the market and show your skin you care with the Athena Club Razor Kit. Head over to athenaclub.com and grab your razor kit today. Or you can find Athena Club razors at your local Target. Plus, with your purchase of a razor kit or blade subscription on their site, you can try their gentle body scrub for free with code DEARSHANDY at checkout for a limited time only. Just pick a plan for your razor kit, begin checkout, and add the code DEARSHANDY before placing your order to automatically add a body scrub to your shipment. Mm. <laughs> that was the best smell experience I've had all week. Trust me, you won't look back. Happy shaving. Okay, what would you say you've learned about human nature? Mm. I mean, I learned what the word pile on means. Uh, and so that's very interesting to watch just in reality TV, in the fandom, but then also just like, in real life, I think you realize people find comfort in numbers and will sometimes go with the flow of what a group is feeling or saying because they're now part of something versus it takes a lot to stand up on your own and and be a solo person in your thoughts. Mm. Um, you know, unfortunately, I see that happen with opinions of like reality contestants. You know, it's like one idea happens and everyone just goes, yeah, I'm going to join in on that. And it's this, like, this crazy thing. And I, I'm surprised at how little people stop to kind of go, well, let's, let's look at the other side or like, let's take a beat and kind of try to see both sides of whatever it is that they're talking about at that moment. Has that been surprising to you or disappointing or I don't know? Um, I mean, yeah, surprising, disappointing. It's, it's, uh, you learn so much when you are in the public eye, like you, you have your way of thinking, which is probably similar to a lot of your friends and family in your little environment. Right. And, mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden you're exposed to like a million people from all different avenues of life. And, and you think like, oh, a normal person would think a, a B, C, but then you learn like, what is a normal person? You know, yeah. there's, there's no normal person. Everyone is so different in the way that they handle conflict, uh, interact with strangers online, have opinions. Like it's, it's crazy and nothing I ever had to think about until being exposed to reality TV. Yeah. You really do get exposed to so many different walks of life. I remember my first day in the Bachelor Mansion. You know, I went to music school with a bunch of musicians and singers and I had lived in Germany. It was just like a total, I had just been in such a different bubble. And then you go into this, you know, it, I had just met people from parts of the U.S. that I had, you know, 
barely heard of, let alone had been to. Mm. And it's kind of shocking, actually. It's a culture shock no matter where you're coming from in that environment with reality TV. It's pretty cool, actually. I mean, think <laughs> it about- takes the, the right person to survive it. You know, when people were asked if they should do reality TV, I'm like, how are you mentally? Because it's a lot you're about to run into. Mm. Okay. I would agree with that. What do you t- attribute your resiliency to that? You seem like you went through it and you haven't changed. You say yeah. you're the same person. You you didn't oh. really go through much pain or suffering. No, no. Like- I definitely I did therapy. I cried. I was depressed. Like, don't. I mean, I'm good now. Time heals everything, as they say. But right. uh, I you had to grow out of it. You either like choose to like be stuck in this dark place, which you everybody gets to on reality TV. Like, I'm going to say that it's a very crappy place to be at at times, you know? Um, But as humans, we are the ones in charge of fixing our problems, you know? And so for me, it was like, okay, how do I want to do that? Well, let's stop reading the comments. Let's stop going to Reddit. Let's Mm -hmm. not listen to this podcast. Cause I think in in the beginning, it's fun. It's like, everyone's talking about me. What are they saying? And then you start (laughs) reading what they're saying and you're like, oh, I I don't want to know what they're saying, you know? And so in some ways I I call it like exposure therapy because I, you become almost like numb to it of like, okay, who's this like stranger? They don't mean anything to me, you right. know, but in other ways you, you realize like what's important, you know, and that's the people in my life. It's my mental health. So what I, what do I need to do to take care of that? Go to therapy, unfollow accounts, mute certain people, block people. I used to have this pride of like, oh my God, if, it, if I block them, they know that they like won. They know that they upset me so much that I blocked them. So I wouldn't. But now I'm like, I don't care. Like, yeah, yeah you, you're you a piece of, I don't know if I can swear, but you know, you're yeah, a you mean can. human. <laughs> so I'm blocking you. You don't have access to me. You don't have access to my page. I don't need that energy. And so I've just been very good about setting boundaries uh, that support my mental health going forward in life. Mm. Right. I, I just want to point that out to you, Andy. It, that's We get in this debate sometimes where I want to block and Andy's like, no, you don't want to give them the satisfaction of even being blocked. Yeah, as long as they know you're blocking them, I don't feel good about it. Yeah, okay, the, the middle zone is um, restricting them. Sometimes I'll do that first because okay. then their comments aren't seen, but they don't know it. You don't have to see that their DMs because it goes to like the like filtered one, whatever. So sometimes that's like a good like middle ground. Okay, <laughs> it's like the stepping stone to yeah, full yeah. blockage. So what about the positive comments, like the parasocial stuff? Do you feel uncomfortable with the fact that you obviously get so much more love than hate, I'm assuming. Mm, she I, I, does. I'm pretty sure you do. Deservedly so. Of too. course. But do you feel this overwhelming sense of like, I cannot respond to everybody. I can't say, oh, thank you. Thank you. You know, there's like a million people telling you such nice things, like overflowing with love for you. Like, how do you handle that? Have you found that to be as difficult in a sense as the negative stuff? I don't know if responsibility is the right word, but you do build this community of like love and support and people are so thankful for you, which is great. But then there's also the flip side of where people come to you for help, you know, Mm. sometimes on the, on the furthest end of like suicide, you know, Mm. or venting about their problems. And it's tough because, you know, sometimes if you open that message and it shows that you've read it, you're now like holding that like on your chest of like, oh my God, like I have to acknowledge this into some capacity. So I've learned to try to balance, you know, yes, engaging with fans, uh, maybe on a more public scale versus like the DMs, it, it is a risk on like, once you open it, like, what is it, what is your responsibility to do with that message next? You know? And, and so that is a big struggle I have sometimes, mm-hmm. especially when you open one, that's a, a heavy topic and you don't want to just, you know, not respond, you know? Oof. Right. Right. Ooh. I find Feel that bad. almost more difficult than the negative stuff, like letting the negative stuff go more difficult having to interact personally with the really like deeply painful positive stuff mm. and not give like a full, if not greater response yeah. for, for that. And he's been known to get in very lengthy I've got, conversations. I've got, like there was, yeah. there was somebody who I was like in like a seven week long uh, okay. DM with, and I was like, I think this has gone too far. I think I need to draw a line. Uh, okay. So let's now talk dating in real life. I want to know If you, I mean, because now F-Boy Island is airing and I mean, I am fully shipping you and Vince, but I mean, I don't know. You can't reveal any spoilers, but you did obviously date in between your stint as Bachelorette and then going on F-Boy Island. 
Did you think it was easier or harder than you remembered? Not so much harder, harder. Okay. So much harder. Yeah. How come? You know, I don't know if it's an age thing because also I'm now in this age where men in their thirties are wanting to only date women in their twenties, you know, and before when I was in my twenties, I had like full access to whoever I wanted. Uh Now I'm learning that I'm literally not within the age range that these guys are putting on their apps, you know? So that was kind of interesting for me to learn. Yeah. That's, I love your brutal honesty with Mm -hmm. that. Cause I feel like that's something that no, a lot of people won't want to admit. Oh, I mean, you you can't avoid it. It, Like sometimes the men tell you and not even realize like how offensive that is or how gross that is. Mm. I'm like, you realize like what you're saying, like so comfortably to my face, you know? Um, And then there's also this weird balance of like, you know, we're, we're reality people. So what is that? Like C, D list celeb, you know? So like, you know, we're not like amazing. But you're like, C. Do- you're a C. I, I think she's B minus. I'm, I'm F. But she's like a solid I think C. She's B, B C. minus. B minus C, C plus. plus. Yeah. yeah. I mean, currently probably B. I mean, that's a big yeah, deal. I think yeah. you're, you're at B. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Congratulations. Either way, it puts us in this weird box of like, if you date someone who isn't in the public spotlight of any capacity, they could be like either intimidated by it mm. or like a fan and you don't want to date a fan, you know? And then on the flip side, you maybe date like a, like a celebrity, but then you're, I'm like, I'm not an actress or a singer. Like I'm just some reality girl, (laughs) you know? (laughs) And so it's just like this weird um, floating world of like, who do I date and who's comfortable dating me given that, you know, I, I, I'm in the public eye and I have this following and my life's very unique. Do you feel the need to date at your level of and, and fame, I'm going to use the word fame loosely, but someone who's had the kind of exposure you have, so you can sort of be at that same, you know, level of playing field. Like, is that something you crave? Like, do you have a celebrity crush or do you, have you dated some celebrities where you're like, okay, this feels more comfortable because we've both experienced this kind of lifestyle. Whereas mm-hmm. if you date some regular you know, civilian, <laughs> sure. they just might, it might be weird. So I've done both. I've dated, as you said, regular civilian and I've dated people who are celebrities. And I think I think the biggest takeaway that I've learned in that is it's not about the fame. I think it's the financial status. I Mm. think you have to financially be with someone that is in the same class as you. And I think I would agree to this even pre-reality TV. You know, Mm. like if you're middle class, you're probably going to be more successful dating someone else in middle class. If you're dating someone who is lower class and you're upper, it, it, it causes this weird, at least for me personally, um, feeling of like, financial power. You know, if I dated someone who I I made more money than them, especially as a woman, a lot of men don't like that. And it it creates this, like this weird thing. And then also as a woman, I do want to be taken care of sometimes, you know, but then I'm like, well, you don't make that much money. Like I'll pay for dinner. So Mm -hmm. I think for me in terms of dating, I've learned, I think it's just like the financial aspect of like being somewhat equal. Ooh. Yeah, this is good honesty. She I mean, says that's, some truths that it's absolutely people don't true. say. Yeah, people don't say that, but it's true. I, I think it can work, but I completely agree with you that it's easier. Like you can overcome some misunderstandings that are just totally unnecessary j- just from your upbringing and how much money you currently make, how much money your parents made, how much, you know, how many trips you went on as a kid or yeah. whether you took the bus to school, you know, things like that. I have actually experienced that in my past dating yeah. life and we do, both, on both ends. We do uh, Q&A episodes on our podcast and like I would say 25% questions. of the questions, relationship Q&A, yeah, sorry. 25% of the questions are some money. Like, like oh, I make more money and he always complains about me spending money. I wouldn't say money. 25%. But I would say 10, 10 percent. OK, yeah, my, my 10 percent. <laughs> it's, it's a good we get a good number. Of yeah, those, so that was it's, it's a thing. Brutal honesty. Katie yeah. Thurston, not disappointing. I mean, look, don't get me wrong. Like when I dated John, he was basically unemployed. Like he he worked for me in my apartment, like lived with me. I gave him basically money in exchange for helping me manage things. Mm-hmm. Uh, so like it can work with the right person. But it does get very complicated, to, you know, so oh, that, I do think I, it's easier for sure. But well, yeah, because, yeah, in that situation, you're his employer. I mean, which gets back to that power and balance thing. Like, that's exactly. really complicated. Yeah. And it's easy to, I don't know. I, I think it goes without saying. I don't need to talk about why that's complicated. Uh, okay. <laughs> so dating on TV. This is, you are, 
you've experienced something so specific and you've dated in real life. Do you think there's any way in which dating on TV is a microcosm for dating in real life? And if so, in what way? Or do you think they're totally like different species, apples, oranges? I think F Boy Island is probably a little bit more realistic to what dating in the real world is like because there are F boys. Um, they are putting on an act to get a prize. You know, sure, it's not $100,000, but maybe it's you in bed, you know, mm-hmm. or whatever it is. Um, so I feel like F Boy Island was the closest thing to real life dating. I have girlfriends there. We're talking about it, you know, and these dates are very like, like normal, you know, whereas I do find the bachelor dating to be a little, um, extravagant and deep and quick and fast. I mean, obviously there's an engagement there, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, but at the end of the day, I think the biggest thing I've learned is like, and it's so cliche, but like love happens when it's going to happen. You have people who met, you know, and got married within a month of meeting. You have people who meet on TV and get married and have kids, you know, like there's no right or wrong way to fall in love. Um, it's just a very unique way to do it when it's on a reality TV show. Yeah, let's be honest. Thomas Jacobs in real life <laughs> comes on to you that strong. You don't throw him out of the house, right? I don't I know. I don't, yeah, the thing, Thomas was a great one <laughs> on my season. Sorry. I know no, he's no, married. Right. He's married now with child. So <laughs> yes, I, yes. I, uh, and I, we love Becca. We love Thomas. Like I said, I'm actually on very great terms with them. Like I bought them dinner. Like it's the reality TV version of all of us is very different than our real life interactions and relationships, you know, mm. but Thomas in the real world, had we gone on dates, great guy where the, the weirdness comes into play is you are also dating other guys who are then talking shit about him right, or saying, right. I don't, you know, like that wouldn't happen, you know? Oh, guys would have to talk so much shit about Thomas for me to turn him down. <laughs> okay. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> This is a theme, Katie. You'll, yeah, it's, it's not bar. just you. It happens all the time. It gets inserted in a non-bachelor <laughs> episode. It's very sweet. It's cute. They have a bromance. Sorry. Okay. I love that. So, do you think then someone that you might fall in love with in real life, you would also fall in love with in that setting? Because you just said love is going to happen when it's going to happen. Um. Yeah, I would say so. I think for the person I'm looking for, they are going to be comfortable uh, in a weird environment like that. They are going to still go out of the way to pursue me despite the discomfort. They're going to be comfortable in a, in a camera setting. You know, like mm-hmm. I don't want like a shy guy. Like I want, I do want someone who probably would overall thrive on a reality show in terms of just like being comfortable, being entertaining, um, being confident with our relationship. Okay, good answer. Because we've often said that, you know, we, if we if Andy were the bachelor, I were the bachelorette and we came on each other's season, we would immediately be drawn to each other. But it's also sort of hard to say. Who knows? Yeah. You know, but I, I feel pretty confident. But, you know, I'm speaking from an experience I don't have. But it is interesting how with John from your season, I guess that maybe is a lesson that you learned is that, you know, he was so shy that you did overlook him in that setting. And that's actually in the long run taught you something about what you're looking for. I don't want to put words in your mouth, Uh, which brings me to my next question though. After all you've been through, how has what you're looking for in a partner changed? So I think one of the biggest things I've learned, and this is with reality TV, this is with John, this is with X, everything. Don't fall in love drunk. (laughs) <laughs> I think I think there is such a uh, reliance on alcohol in terms of dating, but then especially on reality TV, that of course it's very easy to be like loosey goosey and silly and confident because you mm. have this liquid courage. Take the alcohol away. Mm-hmm. Who is this man? Yeah. Take the alcohol away. Point. How much fun are you having with this person? You know? Mm-hmm. And so that's the biggest thing I've learned in just reality TV in general is like, okay, so I made sure on FY Island to like be aware of like, am I, am I drunk? Am I buzzed? Am, can I be sober with this person? Let's, let's see, let's be sober today, you know? Um, and I encourage people to try that out in the real world with like a first date, you know? Yeah. You Ooh, can learn a sober lot. first date. That's tough. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Our first real date was brunch. Did we have a drink? Yeah, but we were the one we met. I think the first date is really when you meet. Okay. Yeah. The first date. Yeah. we No, we were pretty sober. You're right. Another brutal honesty piece yeah 
I think a lot of people don't want to admit that to themselves, how different not only the other person can be, like how you perceive them, but how different you can be, like how open you are to their humor, you, you know, to their advances. You know what I, I, I'm going to say, and this is not a joke, I think there should be a reality dating show called like sober dating or something <laughs> okay. where like no, not like an alcoholic thing, but like yeah. no one's allowed to drink anything ever and they're See stuck in a house, no alcohol. Mm. See what happens. Yeah. Okay. It might be really boring. <laughs> it also, it's a good point you make, I mean, about your experience specifically. I think that, the sh- you know, when I was on the show, that was before they had they had implemented a lot of rules around how many drinks people should yeah. be having or whatever. In my days, they were, I don't want to say like pummeling you, but like they were certainly encouraging you. So it took a lot of your own um you know, awareness to keep track of yeah. what you'd been drinking. It's 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 hard when you have a team of people who's it's in their best interest for you to keep drinking. I mean, it's scary to think like I, I felt that feeling where you go over the line where you have that drink where you're like, oh, I'm like, I don't know if I can be responsible for things I do right now. I had that on night one. Oh, I mean, it's <laughs> terrifying. It's like all of America's watching and you're like, I don't know if I can control myself. Like I've gone too far. Yeah. It's just, oof, Not I don't want to be there. OK, so. I'm interested in, I mean, you sound so well balanced and it sounds like you're really good. I mean, I heard you on Caitlin Bristow's podcast, love Caitlin, friend of the pod. Mm -hmm. You had talked about how, you know, at the end of every year you shed what isn't serving you Mm -hmm. and you, and you included relationships in that, like friendships or, you know, relationships with people. I want to know, you don't have to be too specific, but if sure. you've received judgment or if any relationships have changed with your notoriety over the last three years um, that have surprised you. Yeah. When you're fresh off the bachelorette, everybody is your friend. Mm-hmm. Everybody is your friend. Everybody wants to hang out. Everyone's texting you, inviting you to all the things, wanting to be included, you know, um, and that's very fun. But you see through that very quickly. You know, so there's a lot of people I was very close with coming off the show who I'm not close with anymore just because uh, the relevancy changes. Therefore, the interest in your friendship changes. You know, it's a very quick, like, pop in, pop out type mm-hmm. of situation, you know. Mm-hmm. So th- it's disappointing, but it's also not surprising. You know, that's that is this world that I'm entering um, that I've noticed, you know, then the next batch happens all over again. And you watch the cycle, you know. Mm-hmm. So I think it's just important to recognize what relationships, whether romantic or friendships that you've put in the effort and continue to try to like nurture it and build it. And if it's not serving you, yeah, like you, you get rid of it. You know, I think some people were like, oh, you can't run away from your problems. It's like, I'm not saying run away from your problems, but do recognize like you can only like beat a dead horse so many times, you know? Yeah. Just, I mean, I, I gotta say you seem for someone who says that they don't have many things figured out. It sounds like you do. I've found it difficult and I've been much better in my thirties, but I have found it difficult to, um, shed, like to do what you, what you speak of, you know, sometimes you sort of like hold it an attachment or, um, it's just hard to completely cut someone out who isn't serving you, but you're like, but that one thing is good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It takes time. Don't get me wrong. I think the the last person I've shed, it was like a seven month, like torture of like, maybe I'll forgive them this time. I'll forgive them this time. I'll give them the benefit of the doubt, you know? And then finally you're just like, how many times yeah. am I going to do that? You know? Do, so it, it's you- not easy. Do you have a spidey sense now for when people sort of glom onto you in a way that seems like it's just because you're who you are? I I think I do try to see the best in people initially, mm-hmm. but I, I am always very hesitant or like I'm an observer, you know, like mm-hmm. I'm not going to go all in on somebody that's entering my life. Like I'm going to observe and, and just kind of see, okay, how does this pan out over the next couple months of building this friendship, relationship, whatever. Sure. Yeah. Mm. Are you all in on Dear Shandy or still still <laughs> testing the waters? You guys make me nervous. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> we what? Stop it. <laughs> oh, what why say? is that surprising? She said we make Charlene's nervous. over here like, in the be- I mean, you're good now, <laughs> but I had to like earn it like a like a cat. She's like, hmm. <laughs> hmm. I had to close my sweatshirt because my chest was getting blotchy. <laughs> And I was like, God, what gotcha question is she about to throw at me? Oh, no, no, no oh. you know, okay, here's the thing about you is that I think that, you know, as Game of Roses has coined her, she's the parasocial queen. She's so good at 
like, and I think that has mm. been um, represented very well in how you've behaved with podcasts like ours and like others since you you were able to do so. And I try really hard to not let our podcast be redundant. Like I, you know, you've, you've been on other podcasts and I'm like, what, like, what can we bring to a conversation that Katie Thurston that has not already been brought? And so like, and then plus I'm just like, I love to analyze these, like, it's like, how have you changed? What, like, what were you thinking at that moment? So I hope it doesn't sound like I'm coming at you hard, but that's funny. I mean, that's, it's always interesting to hear what other people. Oh, think come on. People have come at her harder than us. Oh, I, I don't, yeah, right? I don't feel like Pe- we've come hard at Katie We haven't Thurston. come hard, have we? Yeah. Um, no, no, I don't think so. Like, it's not that you come hard. I'm just, oh, you just we like, came hard? I'm like hanging on to every word. I'm like, where is she going with this? What is about <laughs> to be said, you know? I mean, we were Team Katie in the Greg Grippo scandal. We were. Yeah. Big time. Actually, we got we got a lot of hate for yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a lot of love. And a lot of love. Strong. They yeah, are. Yeah. They, they like, are they strong. Like and yeah. we've since met Greg and he's lovely. And yeah. I'm sure like it, it's just he's great. Yeah. It's just interesting how I mean, to get back to your point of what you learn about humans, it's like people get very they're very passionate about often things that they don't. I mean, we don't really know. We, we were just we never know basing our opinions on what we were shown. Really. I really, truly believe that. In that situation, no one really knows what happened other than you and him. And I feel that way about relationships in general. Like no one, it's like, not to quote sex in the city, which I Uh-oh, often do, but you know, no one really knows what happened in a relationship other than the two people in it. True. Beam team for a world-class dream. Oh, Andy, it's true. Team up with Beam, their dream powder. It yeah. does give you a restful night's sleep. Yeah. It's bonkers actually. You're saying, yeah, like, you know, but you, Andy's a naturally good sleeper. I mean, sleeper. I know as I've seen you sleep. Yes. Andy knows that I struggle to sleep. And when Beam was first passed onto the Dear Shandy desk, I was like, whatever. I honestly was. I did not think much of yeah, it. Yeah, I almost had to convince you to even give it a try. Yeah. You were so, so skeptical. Yeah. But then I did. And let me tell you what an experience it was because Beam Dream Powder is basically an excuse to have hot cocoa before bed. And in that hot cocoa, you have nano CBD, reishi, magnesium, L-theanine, and melatonin. And then you sip that at night. Like normally I'm having tea anyway. Why not switch over to hot cocoa? I felt a difference. I slept better and I didn't have that kind of groggy feeling the next morning. It's amazing. It's real science. They focus on the four stages of sleep. Yes. You know what those are? Stage one. Yes. Onset. Yes. And what's next? Stage two. Very good. (laughs) Transition. Ah, stage three. Deep sleep. And stage four. REM. REM. Yes, yeah, everyone knows about know. RAM. That's the promise land. Yes, exactly. And let me tell you, this is just an enjoyable way to wind down and also help you sleep better. I, I really am not easy to please in this department, and I was pleasantly surprised by Beam. So today, our listeners, the Shandies, can get a special deal on Beam's Dream Powder. They're best-selling healthy hot cocoa for sleep with no added sugar. Now available in delicious seasonal flavors like cinnamon cocoa, sea salt caramel, and white chocolate peppermint. Better sleep has never tasted better. A recent clinical study showed that 90 93% of Dream users wake up feeling more refreshed. And 93% reported that Dream helps them get a more restful night's sleep. If you want to try Beam's best-selling Dream Powder, take advantage of their biggest sale of the year and get up to 50% off when you go to shopbeam.com slash shandy. The discount is auto-applied at checkout, no code necessary. That's shopbeam, shopbeam.com slash shandy for up to 50% off. Katie, do you consider yourself a private person? No. <laughs> <laughs> She's a stand-up comedian. Okay, so we're going to gradually veer into the direction of the comedy, but I want to hover on this. Do you think to put yourself in the positions you have put yourself in inherently makes you not a private person, or do you think you have become not as private? I was not a private person even before reality TV. I've always been one to like overshare or connect or just be honest about my opinions, like all the way back to when I was 20 was my first like video rant of like, that was like comedy base a little bit. Um, so I've just been like an overshare open person Mm. always. Okay. In what ways do you think your personality is well suited to being in this role? And in what ways do you think it's not? Well, one, I think I'm very, um, like relatable. So I think, I think viewers like that. I think the, the guys like that, like there's a level of comfort. Of, of either watching or being part of the experience. You know, like I make people feel very like welcome and, and it's like cozy. I don't know, comfort. 
comfort mm-hmm. vibes. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, Very but, girl next door. Yeah, say. yeah. Heavy, she's the, the ultimate, most girl next door yeah, bachelorette yeah, ever seen. Which is a huge compliment, by the yeah. way. Yeah, I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> Um, but then maybe where it doesn't go well, um, I mean, early on for sure it was, it was, I was messy. Messy is a, a word to like describe me in terms of like, how is handling myself online? How is handling the public? How is even handling pr- production? You know, like it was, it's not anything you can like learn, like you're just sink or swim. And I feel like I kind of sank initially in my first experiences, for me, where I think they kind of, there's a mistake almost is like, I was, I think 29 going on The Bachelor and you're a little bit more set in your ways and who you are and you can't be bossed around as much. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to be generalizing with this, but I do think younger people probably make really good television because they're just like there to have a good time. They don't got anything to lose. They're they're in college. They don't have a job to lose or a mortgage to pay for the most part. I'm Again, I know I'm generalizing. But, you know, when I went on The Bachelor, I had just bought a condo. I worked at a bank. I was in a high role, like a, a manager of a mar- of a marketing department, you know? So there's things that I'm like, I will not be doing that. Like, I'm going to stay as true to myself as possible, which sometimes doesn't make great television if you're trying to, like, you know, manipulate certain situations. Mm-hmm. As, a, as a viewer, like, you, you did seem to know yourself more than a lot of people in your role do. But there is always this element to you that I enjoy because I don't ever like it to feel like I'm being uh, duped or like, you know, my intelligence is being insulted. But you always do have this air to me of, of being in on the joke. Mm-hmm. Like, like yep. you, there is, I don't know if this is intentional or not, but you're like, I, I have, we have a show to do. There's a show being put on. You know, I definitely didn't have that mentality for Bachelorette. That, I was too sleep deprived to think two hours ahead of me. Like, okay. I don't know. Um, with F-Boy Island, I don't, I think there was just less pressure and stress of like an engagement, you know? So I did get to kind of lean in more on like the silliness of it if I wanted to be silly, you know, whereas on other shows, it's like, you're corrected. They're like, no, no, like focus, stop, stop giggling. Stop. You know, you can't say that. Like, this is about an engagement, you know? Um, so in some ways I am in on the joke, but like the whole show is in on the joke. Nikki is the host and she's in on the joke. You know, it's like, that's what made F boys just so much fun is that we all got to kind of be ridiculous. Um, and I don't know if you got to see the, the latest episode that's coming out, uh, Friday tomorrow. I haven't seen Um, that one yet. It's just, it's just funny to watch what looks like is about to be serious. And then they just like pull the rug from you and you're like, oh yeah, the show it's, it's reality TV. It's like, how serious can it be? I mean, I do think that that element of your personality does lend very well to comedy. About the comedy, I, there's a fantastic LA Times article that I read. I mean, this is from a, a, several months ago now, but it was about your transition from, you know, personality, TV personality into stand-up comedy. And you've seen a remarkable amount of success. Like we, Andy actually is friends with lots of stand-up comedians. We are, for some reason, I don't, I don't know why you, yeah, you have so many comedian friends, but we're the the, best people. They are. Yeah. yeah. And I'm the saddest usually. (laughs) True. (laughs) How are you the saddest? Comedians? Oh, oh, they're the saddest. Comedians are yeah, often Yeah, I thought you sad. meant you. Yeah, no, comedians no. are often the saddest. Totally. Yeah, sad clowns. Uh, do you think you would have had the courage to pursue what I assume is a dream of yours had you not been through what you've been through? Mm. Yes. So it's funny because this whole comedy dream, I believe fully is what led me to even be cast for Matt's season all the way back to Bachelor. Because I was wanting to do open mics just for fun. You know, that's where you start. You do a little three-minute set, whatever. Um, and then COVID hit. And so all the clubs shut down. You couldn't do it. And I was like, I want, by my 30th birthday, that was my goal. Do one open mic and check it off the list. So the club shut down and then there's TikTok. So I'm like, well, let me start practicing on TikTok. So I start to put out these video rants that are like comedic on TikTok. And I, I grow a following. And this is all pre-bachelor. And so then of course we're still in the pandemic. I apply for the season. They see my, my whole TikTok, which shows my personality, which shows I'm comfortable in front of a camera. It shows the humor side. I think obviously having some audience was a pull for them as well. 
Mm. Uh, and then I ended up being on the show. And so then I had to almost like take a break. Like I had back to back reality TV filming moments, you know, where I kind of had to put that on pause. And then fast forward to my PR for Bachelorette. I'm on Whitney Cummings podcast. And I tell her like, oh, I've been really wanting to try open mics. I just haven't got around to it yet. I had to put it on pause. She's like, oh, would you like to open for me? And so <laughs> I <laughs> cannot say no to opportunity like that. Like when will that ever happen again? I didn't know. So I said, yes, having never even done an open mic. Oh my wow. God. Yeah, You're a and maniac. So, <laughs> it's so crazy and cringy to watch back knowing like, what that set looked like versus like what I can do now. Like at the, in the moment I was like, so proud of myself. I was like, yeah, I killed it. You know, <sighs> but I was like hammered, sloppy, inexperienced, still hadn't done an open mic. That was my open mic essentially in front wow. of this huge audience. That's in insane. Anaheim. Mm. I mean, yeah. that's Absolutely. truly insane. Yeah. I mean, I'm assuming you didn't do that well. Like, <laughs> I I no, no, I mean, it's impossible. There's no one who in the world, like Louis C.K. would not do that and not bomb his first uh, open mic. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't say bombed. People were definitely laughing, but there's also ownership and like everyone knew like, hey, this is my first time. So people want to support, you know, it's I like see, okay. they're watching so, a virgin lose her virginity. And got, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. Okay, got there's it. There's entertainment so they, in they that. Knew, they knew it was your first. Yes, yes. Okay, yes. that that makes it easier. That a is, little bit, a tiny, tiny little bit. That is beyond ballsy. Like I can't unbelievable. I can't even imagine wanting to do that. That's like that's <laughs> like never like not being able to swim and diving off like a 30 meter platform. Yeah. And I mean, I sing for a living. Like I know what it's like to get on the stage in front of all these people, but like I cannot imagine wanting to just go to an open mic and tell oh my god jokes. it's hard. how it's drunk like were you like were you nightmare. blind did you remember anything yeah so it's funny because i was trying to coordinate drinking and pacing for like when i knew i'd be on stage <laughs> we ended up being an hour behind so you finished the bottle of jack daniels right before you went on stage <laughs> by the time i was on stage i was pretty drunk like it was okay. it was pretty sloppy but um <laughs> But yeah, oh I've come a long way since then. I've I've now obviously done tons of open mics, produced my own shows that have sold out, been on other people's shows. Like I'm moving to LA next. Um, so that'll be just the next step for comedy. So I'm very excited. Wow. Wow. I mean Good for you. I think that's really cool. Yeah. That's the perfect marriage of something you already wanted to do and were investing your time in. Even though you really were established in your career. You know, you had every reason to not pursue this. It's not like you were just like flailing in your professional life. Yeah. But I just think it's the perfect marriage of like having already started and gotten that ball rolling in a small but meaningful way combined with capitalizing on the opportunities that going on these shows gives you. Like there's an mm -hmm. honesty in that and also an authenticity in that you were already doing it. Mm -hmm. I just think that often you get one or the other. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, I went on these shows and now I'm just like quitting my job and just, you know, posting on Instagram for a living. So. I don't know. I just think it's really cool. No, it's great. And with comedy, it doesn't matter who you are. Like you could be the most famous person in the world. You will still bomb if you're not good. So, <laughs> oh, so Andy you may calls it dying, dying. I mean, it's I mean, the, you will bomb if you one. are good like that. Like you just right. have to accept that as part of the job, as part of the exercise. You know, Ali Wong, I just finished her um, book and she talks about she would go to all these different rooms with different people, you know, different backgrounds. Like she wouldn't cater to her audience because obviously my audience would be like women who watched reality TV. But like, imagine me going into a room of just like men who have never watched reality TV. Like, do my jokes land there? You know, that's that's the kind of practice you have to put mm -hmm. into yourself and just accept that bombing is part of growth. It's something that is unforgiving. And despite the openings and opportunities that you have as a result of your reality TV life, you, if you succeed, it will be because you are funny in the mm -hmm. end. Yeah, totally. Tom Cruise couldn't get into stand-up comedy no. and suddenly become the biggest stand-up comedian. Just for his time. <laughs> I mean, they would still come to see him, but they wouldn't laugh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As we wind down here, I want to know for each Bachelorette and F-Boy Island, one regret you have and one choice or thing you're particularly proud of. Let's see. For F-Boy Island, I'm... I'm just proud I said yes. I think it would have been very easy to say absolutely no to reality yeah. TV again. So I'm very, I'm very proud I said yes. I have no regrets in that. Um, and it, even in answering that, I'm like, do I have anything I regret with F Boy Island? I I really, I mean, so far, we're only halfway through. None. We'll see how things continue to move as as things happen. I don't I don't oh, know. I really sorry to interrupt, yeah. but that's an interesting point you just made. So what you're saying is that a regret you might have is 
in some way influenced by the by what you see on TV, by what you watch. Mm. It could be when you see it on TV. Um, it could be the overall impact of going on the show. It could be the relationship. Like I don't like as of right now, I have no regrets. I'm. It's still very much a live, ongoing experience. Yeah. But there can be a regret around the corner that I don't know is about to create itself. You know. Oh, oh man. <laughs> so Whereas, far, like, so good. Right, that's a full circle thing. Like I can, I can reflect on it. It has a beginning, middle and end. I can reflect, you know, okay. um, for bachelorette, um, uh, <laughs> not giving you that sound bite. Um, <laughs> I'll say that I'll say it. I'm, pr I'm proud for, for speaking up for what is important to me. And, and, and that's a very scary thing to do, uh, in that environment. Um, you know, when there's a lot of uh, people above you and you're kind of going against the grain, um, I am, I'm happy that I was able to, to stay true to myself, um, in all aspects, um, in terms of a regret, uh, I might actually be talking about this on a future episode of bachelor in paradise. I don't know. Um, but I'll talk about it here. I do regret how I handled my, my breakup with Blake. You know, I, I think, um, John was probably a comfort rebound and reflecting on that relationship. You know, I was in a new city, uh, that Blake and I were supposed to be in together. We didn't work out. John was a friend who was living in this said city. And, um, I think I just rushed into that as opposed to letting Blake and I kind of really make sure we were done when we said we were. Um, so it is a pleasant treat to then get to see him on the beaches of paradise. Uh, I don't know when this episode comes out, but next yeah, Thursday it comes is out. Yeah, so yeah. it's next yeah. week. Next Thursday. Oh, yeah. 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 Sorry. Yeah. So coming up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have a couple of true or falses for you. Okay. And then we're going to set you free. Although I do have one final question. <laughs> Actually, I'll ask the final question now because it was, Are you what's your relationship with Blake like these days? This came up a lot from our shandies. We pull our shandies for questions. Yeah. And when we teased you, you know, they really came through, mm -hmm. particularly too, because at the end of our BIP recaps, we have this segment called Who We Would Go For. And I would have gone for Blake at, ev like, we're at episode every seven episode. now. Every episode, yeah. I have said Blake. They just want to know... Um, what your relationship with Blake is today. Especially and since and, I and is Blake a good partner for Charlene? <laughs> you I know, guess. I think he would be. I think he's a very good partner in general. You know, I awesome. found this old journal entry that I wrote on the day of the finale airing back when him and I were together. And it was so funny to reflect how caring he was and all the stresses that I was feeling. Like I was just hyping about it, you know, and I was just like, oh, Man, like, you know, like you go back into that mindset that you're so far removed from and you're like, oh, man, he was a good guy, you know, mm. um, in terms of where we stand now. I mean, we posted a picture together the other day that almost broke the freaking Internet. Yeah. Right? <laughs> you're very good at that. <laughs> you know, it's, it, I do love to just be a little bit of a troll. You know, like I posted it with no caption, no tag, no nice, background. Nice. But the story's there. I mean, Blake was in San Diego for his nonprofit you know, fundraiser that I and other Bachelor alum were invited to. Like, it's it's as simple as that. We support each other. Um, you know, if I can show up for him, I'm going to. So um, overall, we are on great terms. Uh, you do get to see how that is started on the beaches of paradise. So that's um, I think that'll be a really fun moment for viewers to see just two emotionally mature adults who loved each other at one point. Mm. Mm, that's nice. That is nice. I look forward to it. And okay, sorry, I was about to wind dead, but you you talk about you put the photo out there with no caption. Like there is a naughtiness oh, to, yeah. to that your relationship with you know a f f people who are frothing at the mouth for some update. They want the tea, all the things. <laughs> like how aware of that, or like how in on it are you? I'm assuming a hundred percent. Like you are known for throwing a grenade out there and being like. You know, sometimes I know exactly what I'm doing. And then sometimes I am so caught off guard by the outcome of something that I'm like, oh, I did not see that happening, you know? And so I've learned with social media, especially if I have an idea and I think, okay, the worst that could happen is this. What I've now learned is if I think that's the worst, multiply it by three and then decide if you still want to do that. <laughs> and that is three. that has helped me make decisions going forward. <laughs> I love three. That's, I do that with everything. I was expecting her to say by 10 or something. Three, no, yeah. three is specific. a good number. Yeah. yeah, Three is enough. 10 is like. Yeah, yeah that's you're right. That's building. two over the top. Ten, yeah. you should know. You should know. You should know. Yeah. It's just not even worth it. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Finally, Katie, true or false? You've pretended to be into someone you weren't on a show. Mm. 
false. Okay. I've had to keep I've had to keep people around. Okay. Know? Well, that was another one. True or false? There was someone you didn't connect with but kept because production told you to. Oh, true. Okay. Okay, wait. Last I'm adding one. <laughs> there is someone you sent home because production told you to. And I should clarify for legal reasons this is not F Boy Island. Okay. Again, <laughs> again no, there's this is money. not F Boy. They did not this- interfere with the outcome. She's a professional. No, no absolutely. Look at this. this is Bachelorette. We're okay. talking Bachelorette. Okay. So no, go I just back feel to- like legally, like I, they really could not do that. On oh, no, no, no. Island, which we, is great. We're not talking about that. Um, But I'm sorry. What was the question? <laughs> the question was, did you send someone home because production said you should? Um, Yes. Oh. Yes. And it's interesting because, because I remember being told like, oh, there's some things, there's some things you don't want, you know, and given the Bachelor Nation drama, you're like, oh, if there's things. I don't, what are those things? Don't care. Don't want to touch it. You know, but then you get home, you're Googling, what are these things? I couldn't find them. Okay. But it it wasn't, the person's initials were not TJ, right? (laughs) No. (laughs) No. (laughs) Thomas was very much supported. And I actually thought he was going to be the next bachelor. I really did. I remember being like, if him and I don't end up together, because he was, he was definitely like a top three guy um, before Blake ever appeared. You know, you're always kind of like ranking them. I was like, you know, if him and I don't end up being together, he'd he'd make a great bachelor. Mm. Top three guy. You sent him home like night two. <laughs> I don't know about night two, but he he did quickly lose the graces of his ranking oh. for sure. Okay. All right. Anyway, I'll stop. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm adding another one quickly. True or false? You knew. I know Blake came in late, so that's tricky. But you knew your top three on night one. Well, I thought I did. Like Connor was a front runner night one, Connor mm-hmm. the cat, as we call him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, we but I love Connor. Yeah. I, he was great night one, but as we continued his, he was no longer a top three for me, but night one, I think for sure he was a top three. Okay. So I guess, yeah, false. Okay. Well, know that for the future, Connor, yeah. good first date. <laughs> <laughs> but again, you're drinking, we're making out. I'm thinking it's great. But He's then we make whiskers. out again with a little less alcohol and it, it was a different, the spark was different, you know? Yeah. And you totally like cats. Good. You really do I like love cats. cats. <laughs> Me too. And Andy yeah. also loves cats. Like cats He's a big too. cat person. Yeah. Okay, final true or false. You have made out with someone you probably wouldn't have made out with in real life. True. <laughs> <laughs> true. And some, you can't even help it. You're like, they just go for it. And I, again, being so like empathetic, I'm just mm-hmm. like, okay. You know, like yeah. I, I would rather take it than like do one of these. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and to add on to that, have you ever initiated to make out with someone on TV to stop them from talking. That's a great move, but I've never, I've never done that. No. (laughs) Filing that one away for later. Yeah. Katie Thurston, what a joy it has been to have you on. Thank you guys. It's fun. Thank you for joining us and for humoring us. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, We just are enjoying F-Boy Island so much. It's weird. Honestly, like when I first heard the announcement, I was like, that makes total sense. But also like, it's so different. You know, it doesn't take itself seriously in the same way The Bachelor does. So I wasn't sure what to expect. But you are, I mean, you are a professional. She's a pro. <laughs> she is. She's a pro. She seamlessly just became the lead of another dating show. It's amazing. Yeah. And I, I mean, I don't know what happens, but I mean, I hope it's Vince. <laughs> 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 Not that it matters what I think. I just think they would have very cute Hoppa babies. <laughs> That's a good poker face. Look at that. Oh, but also one more thing before we let you go. I got to give you props because you were the first person ever on the show on this franchise, and I've been watching for a long time, as I know you have too. But on night, I think it was night one, when someone asked you about how many kids you wanted or whatever, and you were like, I'm not 100% sure about kids. I'm still figuring that out. I felt so seen in that moment. I was like, yes. She did, <laughs> it she was did our that. flashpoint for that episode. So thank you for that. I love that. I love to hear that. Thank you. Katie Thurston, we will set you yeah. free. Thank, thank you, you so, so much, much for joining us. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Oh, man. You know, we got through all our questions. Wow. Yes, that doesn't always happen. She was extremely efficient. Yeah. She's such an interesting personality to me. She's, I I find her so relatable in some ways, and in other ways, she's like so, she's such an enigma. Yeah. I, it, it almost seems like too normal, like something else is going on there. And not normal in a bad way. Yeah. Like vanilla. I'm just saying she seems too down to earth. Like, I feel like there's got to be something going on. (laughs) (laughs) 
Yeah, it's funny. Like, just the, um, you know, like when I mentioned she'll throw a grenade out there and just sort of like see what happens. Or yeah. like the fact that she, you know, jumped at the opportunity to do an open mic. Like, she's so fearless. She has a true, like, mm. I don't give a fuck mm. attitude to her. It's part of her brand, actually. Yeah. I admire it because I do not have that. I think she actually was always meant to be in front of the camera. 100%. Like, I know she had, so I, I didn't know that she had some decent banking career going on in Renton, in Washington. Yeah. Which we were really close and to she her. She bought her own recently. place. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, but I think that she has that kind of appeal. It's hard to put your finger on, but it feels like she's speaking to you. It's that real deep parasocial connection she yeah. gives. Like it's like some talk show hosts have it. Like you're like, oh yeah, I know Jimmy Kimmel. Like, no, no, you don't know Jimmy <laughs> Kimmel. He doesn't care about you. Yeah, he doesn't but he know your name. <laughs> but he makes you think he does. Colbert, Stephen Colbert does the same thing. It's like you're like, oh, if I met Stephen Colbert, he'd be like, Oh, Andy, yeah, you watch my show. Yeah, it's let's go get a beer. You, it's possible you do do that though, because I mean we have a podcast. Okay, but the, I'm saying if I didn't have a podcast. <laughs> a pretty big qualifier. Kind of busting holes in this? Come on, <laughs> give me a break. But she has that. She has that je ne sais quoi where you're just like, that person's talking to me. She's approachable. She's relatable in front of the camera. That's not easy to do. I feel like she was born to do that. I think, you know, some people go into stand-up comedy and I'm like, eh. I think that this is probably a good path for her. 100. And, I think and for she's gonna, you to say that, like yeah. that's the biggest compliment. Oh, I, there's you nothing give. I like more than to tell people to stop doing comedy. Oh yeah. But I think for her, it's a good call. I think she's going to do well at it. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's still un insane that her first ever thing was it's opening for Whitney opening Cummings. For Whitney Cummings. Yeah. That's totally insane. I think that she has that thing, and not many people have it. I've seen a lot of very composed bachelorettes and people who have been entertaining, but they still don't quite have that connection with the audience. That, yeah. And I said in Girl Next Door, which she has in spades. Yeah, yeah. And I the think- The twinkle in her eye too, where it's like, we're in this together. Yeah, it's like she's yeah. got that wink wing. She's mm -hmm. in on the joke, kind of, whatever you call it. I don't know if it's a joke, but she's in on the thing. And that's very rare. And I believe if I had money, if I had to buy equity yeah. in a star, I think Katie is on her way to- Oh, things. wow. That yeah. is, wow. I felt the same way about Caitlyn. And Caitlyn's big. Oh. I, you like how I just retroactively <laughs> call them like, like, who's done well in the Bachelor franchise? I believed in them. <laughs> you did, though, with Caitlyn. I did. Yeah. What else do we got in Renton, Washington? What else do you think is percolating there? In Renton, Maybe Washington? Maybe there's a lot of other Katies. You we think? were in Renton. We passed through Renton. Oh, when we were in yeah, Seattle. Yeah, we, we drove to Rainier. Oh. And then we were driving back to Seattle and we came through Renton. We actually did an escape room in Renton. Oh, that was Renton? Yeah, or that a restaurant. It was either an escape room or a restaurant <laughs> or both. I don't remember. But we went, I remember Renton was the town we were going through. Isn't it so weird the journey your life can go on? Yeah. Like, how unbelievable is that? She, she's like, okay, yeah, I know she was doing her TikTok, her comedy and stuff like that. And she says that she would have had the courage to do that. And I believe her. Yeah. But it's like, what a circuitous route. <laughs> it's so it's insane. It's so crazy. It's so insane. And, like, and how famous she is for, for what she's, like, yeah. the specific things she's done. It's so interesting. And in an alternate universe, which I do believe in, by the way. Oh, yeah, I, I know. I strongly believe that every decision you make splits into two universes. <laughs> yeah. Which is upsetting and cool at the same time. But I... <laughs> I do believe that there is a very successful banking executive named Katie Thurston, Katie Thurston in Renton, Washington or elsewhere. Oh, wow. Right now in another universe. I think she did excellent. She's the head of marketing of a big bank. Yeah, but her life is less exciting. Yeah, she always longs for something more oh. and she'll have a midlife crisis. <laughs> but in another universe, so she doesn't have to worry about this. Podcast, Katie Thurston's doing great. Oh man, that was really cool chatting with her. Yeah. Didn't it feel like like that we've come full circle? So full circle. I mean, circle. it was her season. You know, I know Dear Shandy had been around for close to a year when we started recapping, yeah. and hers was the first season we ever recapped. But it was really her season that I think launched Dear Shandy. I agree. It was probably the Greg Grippo scandal. I mean, I, 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 yeah. So you, did you get the feeling she had regrets about Thomas? <laughs> You know, I was expecting you to bring up Thomas once in this. Sorry. And I didn't realize it was going to be sprinkled throughout. Yeah, I went too far. No, it's sweet. I think it's cute. I kind of wish we'd asked her if she act, like formally regretted that. But, I don't. you know, it kind of doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. He's married now. If he was single, we could have had a more frank conversation about it. Oh. Yeah, he's married. He's got no, a kid. No, I feel like if she was... If she would send him home in that way, I just don't think they were ever right for each other. Yeah. 
Well, you can say what you want. She made a mistake. <laughs> I won't let it die. <laughs> I mean, he was your first major I told you so in the Bachelor franchise. So the first I told you so is the one you remember the most. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's a wrap. It is. If you enjoyed what you heard today, you know what we will ask of you. And that is to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, follow us on Instagram and TikTok. Leave us Apple and Spotify. Podcast rating and ratings and reviews and generally do all the things. Oh, tell your friends and generally do all the things you would do to support a podcast you enjoy. Thank you so much for tuning in and we'll see you next time on Dear Shandy. Bye-bye. Thank you.